Okay, just a, a description of uh, two or three cases with uh, complex anatomy. Just, uh, I think uh, uh, the case presentation can give us some clues about the complexity that we can come across sometimes during our clinical uh, life. And uh, in the last second and third case, I will uh, tell you some, uh, let's say, more uh, sophisticated imaging that can be useful during uh, device implantation. Well, this is the first case. A patient with uh, complex transposition uh, that uh, was born in 73, very complex history. Modified BT shunt at the beginning, then a Rastelli, put in an anchor conduit 22 millimeters in 78, then in 86, he underwent conduit replacement with homograph and closure or residual VSD. Then another operation in 2001, homograph replacement with an ANCOC, 25 millimeters. And eventually in 2005, he underwent melody implant and VSD device uh, implantation for residual VSD. This procedure was done in London. Well, in 2008, he experienced progressive clinical deterioration, and he came to our observation for this. This is the catheterization and the angiogram. We uh, verified that uh, the right ventricular pressure was uh, systemic. You may see that uh, here, you may guess, there is a displaced melody valve with some degree of obstruction, I would like to say a severe, uh, degree of obstruction with the long stent in the RV outflow tract and uh, the melody there. You see the long metal tube. The LV angiogram showed a very large residual VSD again. So what we decided to do in that during that catheterization in this try to close the residual VSD. We enter the VSD from the left side, establish an arterovenous loop. This is a balloon sizing across the VSD. Then we implanted a muscular VSD occluder directly from the artery, from the aorta. You see the device still attached to the delivery cable, a check angiogram to verify the good position of the device, which seems to be okay. So the device is uh, released from uh, the delivery cable here. Control angiogram demonstrated apparently a very good result with a tiny residual leak. So we were very happy. But of course, the problem of the stenotic melody valve was still there. You see the how the dislodged valve there, just outside the stent, with systemic pressure in the right ventricle. So the VSD was okay, the two devices here, but still a severe stenosis of the right ventricular outflow. So we attempted to put a second valve there. It was very, very difficult or impossible from the femoral vein, so we switched to right in general jugular vein approach. It was also very difficult, but eventually I could get a stent across the uh, previous implanted melody and implanted a second melody valve, as you see here, inflating the inner balloon, the outer balloon, and that's the final result. With a uh, nice result, no regurgitation and uh, significant decrease in right ventricular pressure. So we've been very happy. We closed the residual VSD, we fixed the melody with a second valve inside, patient did very well. However, in spite of the immediate clinical improvement, he experienced progressive deterioration subsequently. So we brought the patient back to the hospital and to the cath lab, and that was what we'll see in March 2010. There was a device dislodgement with large residual shunt. There was not an immediate dislodgement of the device, it was late dislodgement of the device. So the decision was to send the patient to surgery eventually, 
The surgeon removed the VSD devices, closed the VSD with the garter patch, and implanted an Edwards 25 conduit. And the patient was very well. This is the stent and the two devices. And uh, unbelievable, the melody valve was still well functioning. So the patient uh, uh, went very well. The latest follow-up in December 2014 with good clinical conditions, no right ventricular outflow obstruction, no pulmonary regurgitation, and no VSD. So he eventually uh, he's in very good clinical conditions. But the history of this patient, I would say, was extremely complex with a happy end, hopefully. Okay, that's the first patient I, would, uh, I uh, wanted to present to you. Well, that's an exceedingly complex, complicated cases. That's another patient, 21, uh, female, with neonatal di diagnosis of pulmonary atresia VSD. He had a BT shunt, then a surgical repair using homograph. Then uh, conduit replacing with Shellai conduit when it came to our observation for severe pulmonary incompetence and calcification. You see the heavily calcified and regurgitant conduit and with the stenosis at the origin of the right pulmonary artery that we don't see very well in this angiogram. Well, we implanted a, an understand to fix the stenosis at the origin of the right pulmonary artery and implanted a CP cover stand in the calcified conduit. That was a pre stenting We left the, the patient there because we planned to do some more sophisticated imaging study of this patient to decide what to do later on. So this patient had a cardiac CT. You see here the 3D reconstruction with the two stents in the RV outflow trot and the origin of the RPA. Then the CT key with the 3D computerized model. And based upon this uh, uh, 3D uh, CT model reconstruction, we printed a 3D model of this patient. And this is the 3D model in different colors. You see the CP stent in blue, the left arm structures in uh, red or pink, and the white in the, the right heart structure. And we simulated, we wanted to simulate the implantation of the valve inside the conduit. Well, this is the sapient valve. They don't need to explain how to inflate the balloon. And we simulated the sapient implant taking into account the size, the length, the anatomy, and it was, well, it was rather very easy to implant a sapien in the model, in the 3D model. Well, then we planned to do this, and plan to implant a 23 sapien because of bulky structure and not very big uh, conduit. So this is uh, the angiogram that we perform in the cath lab when we brought the patient to the cathedra for implanting the valve. You see the CP cover stent in the conduit, the uh, understand at the origin of the right PA, free regurgitation, of course. And the procedure was completed with a 3D angiogram, just to make sure that uh, there were no problems about the proximity of the coronary arteries. This is a 3D rotational angiogram and 3D reconstruction in that case. So we were happy about the position of the coronaries, no problem at all. So we went ahead and planted the, 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 the sapien, which is, uh, well, in this particular patient was, uh, well, the easiest part of the procedure. That's the final result, as you see here with perfectly competent valve, no residual obstruction. So the result was really very, very good. So in conclusion for this case, we can say that the 3D model maybe is not mandatory in all cases, of course, but can offer a better grasp on anatomical details of complex anatomies. And simulation on 3D model is likely to be the best way for planning complex interventional procedures. 
Well, the last case I want to describe to you is a young patient with the initial diagnosis of aortic stenosis who had balloon valvuloplasty for months, then a ROS procedure at six years of age, and uh, he, the surgeon put a shellai conduit 19 millimeters between the right ventricle and pulmonary regurgitation. And during follow-up, he experienced evidence of conduit stenosis, of course. And this is the MRI of this patient. You may see a really hypertrophied right ventricle with preserved systolic function and evidence of uh, obstruction of the distal part of the conduit close to the bifurcation. This is the angiogram we perform in the cat lab. You see here in AP and lateral projection, the severe stenosis supravalvular very, very close to the bifurcation. Well, we did 3D rotational angiogram as well to see better, uh, to better understand the anatomy. You see the severe stenosis involving the bifurcation of both right and left pulmonary branches. So this is gonna be a good idea to uh, put a valve and stand here, but of course with this kind of anatomy it's not that easy to implant uh, a stand properly. We can use uh, jailing one pulmonary branch, entering the second branch with another balloon, crush the stand, uh, put another stand in. That can be uh, obtained, but the technique that we uh, decided to use in this case was the following. Place two wires in right and left pulmonary branches using a single opal cell stand mounted on two balloons inserted into the same large sheet. And the idea was to expand the distal portion of the stand by inflating the two balloons by just a partial withdraw of the uh, sheath in order to allow expansion just of the distal part of the stand to be sure that uh, it will be fixed in the main PA partially uh, engaging the origin of the branches and achieving a stable position. And then we draw completely the sheath and expand again the rest of the stem. This is a issue. You see the bifurcation stenosis, the two wires, the two balloons, and a single stent, expansion of the distal portion, then we draw the sheath and expansion of the rest of the stent, eventually achieving a stable position, as you see here, and abolishing the residual stenosis. Then we decided to implant a second stent, more proximal, because there was a significant stenosis as well in the RV to PA to the conduit junction, Another understand was implanted there. And then eventually the melody was implanted. And it was the, of course, the easiest part of the procedure. Again, pre-stenting and uh, uh, achieving a good landing zone is a key issue for achieving good results. That's the angiogram immediately afterwards with no regurgitation at all with no stenosis, nice flow, symmetrical flow to both pulmonary branches. And that's the 3D fusion from 3D rotational. This is an appearance pre-stent implantation, and that's the fusion imaging with the melody implanted, with the perfectly positioned stent and the excellent, I would say, reconstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract. So this is it. Thank you very much.